Welcome to the PLC Professors Workshop and Development Lab. This is where we develop all the lab projects for our hands-on training manuals. And this is also where I develop the learning stations that I use in my live classroom presentations. The one we're going to be dealing with in this lecture or two, I'm not sure how many because I tend to do a mind dump when I do stuff like this. I don't know how long it's going to go. But this is the Micrologix 1400 training station that I use in my live presentations. You don't have to use this particular processor. It's the L32BXB, which has the appropriate high-speed electronics built into both a few input and output terminal locations to support pulse train output, pulse width modulation, and high-speed counters. And you see that I have external connections for high-speed counter and PTO PWM. So you don't have to use the BXB. You don't have to have these additional terminal strips, and you don't have to use this box. You can build your own. Or you can buy the kit that we provide and you can buy just the empty box with the holes machined in it and all the printing on it and buy your own components or buy the box and the components or just the components. So we're trying to, I, I used to build dozens of these things and I sold them online. Well, I'm, I don't want to build any more of them except by special order. So they no longer appear on our website as a inventory product. So what we're going to do in this set of lectures, one or two, is to give as much information as we can to specifically apply earlier lectures on building a digital field device simulator, that's this thing, this box, applying this to a Micrologix 1400. So let's, let's jump in and start looking at a Micrologix 1400 specifically the connections that we need to make. This is a straight line learning path. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that you don't know a whole lot about wiring up a PLC or a controller and I'm going to start at that point and I'm going to beat a straight line right towards you determining what screw terminals to use on the controller, what to hook up to them, and more importantly, how to build a PLC learning station using the Micrologix 1400. I am assuming that you've watched the six or seven previous lectures on how to build a digital field device simulator. We won't repeat that information. This is just on connecting up or landing the conductors on the screw terminals of your Micrologix 1400. This also applies for the most part to any controller as long as you understand the syncing sourcing and the groups of common I.O. wiring. Now we're going to demonstrate and talk about all that. So this information is good even if you're not using a 1400. So let's start right out and look at the screw terminals for a 1400. So this is a, a diagram out of the manual. And the diagram shows, and this is for a BXBA, by the way, 7, 1766 L32 BXBA. That is the Micro 1400 controller that has this high-speed circuitry, inputs and outputs, so you can have high-speed counter, PTO, and PWM. And the wiring diagram we're showing here is also for the BXB-A, which A means analog. So we're showing the analog connections here as well. Even though some of the stuff we're going to show you doesn't include the analog, we're trying to cover the whole sweep here. So let's start out looking at these screw terminals for the inputs. And what you'll notice right away when you look at the little rectangles with COM0, N1, N3, N4, that that matches the lower circles on the manuals diagram, but it matches the upper tier of screw terminals on the controller. There's an upper tier and a lower tier. And one thing for you to pay attention to is when you're determining which 
checks belongs to which screw terminal, remember that COM0, N1, N3, that's the upper tier. And those screw terminals are directly below that checks. Offset N0, N2, COM1, they would be in the lower tier, but directly under the plastic barrier between the upper screw terminals. So that's a good thing to pay attention to. So these are the input terminals. And you see the heavy dark gray lines between, say, COM0, N0, 1, 2, 3, COM1, 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth. Those are groupings of isolated, electrically isolated I.O. The N.C. on the end, those five, that's, this is a picture of the terminals of a BXB. The diagram is a BXB-A, so that shows common analog and input voltage 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now looking at the outputs, and remember that the text on the screw terminals is placed in a way that when you have the controller mounted on a vertical panel and you're standing in front of it, you can read the upper labeling and the lower labeling. Let's not worry about that. Nonetheless, you see the screw terminals down below, and their labeling up above them matches that diagram out of the manual, except for NC, NC, NC on the very right end, because this is a BXB controller, but we're showing you the manual diagram for a BXBA. So let's talk about the first group of inputs, COM0, input 0, 1, 2, 3. These five terminals, so to speak, are isolated electrically from all the other terminals on this input strip, which means that if you want to use 12 volts DC for input 0, 1, 2, and 3, you could do that, and then you have a, a common 0 that would return to the 0 volt DC side of the power supply. Now, either way, you're probably going to jump all the commons together because typically you don't leave anything floating in your system. So here's a group of four inputs isolated from this group of four inputs. Isolated from this group of four inputs. They're orange circles because these are the four input 8, 9, 10, 11 that were specifically wiring up on our training stations for high speed counter interface. And then you've got this group of eight. Now, all these are DC. There's no AC inputs on this controller. I purposefully do not use any voltages that, ha that present a shock hazard to the learner. So it's strictly 24 volts DC on my part. And then the last group of inputs would be the analog. We have a common for those four analog inputs. Notice that we have five, in a sense, common screw terminals. When I build systems, because I'm using strictly 24 volts DC, I wire all of those together. I, th those are all jumper together, along with all the ones on the other side, the output terminals. These three. All these screw terminals with a black circle around it, on my systems, you will find them all daisy chain jumper together, and, of course, that picks up the 0 volts DC from the VDC neutral terminal down in the bottom group. So down on the bottom group, you have VDC 24 plus 24. That's 24 volts DC power coming into this controller. And then 0 volts DC from that same power supply to VDC neutral. And then I carry that throughout all the commons. Okay, for outputs, we have a number of isolations. Output 0 is totally isolated from all the rest of them. And DC 0, VAC, that's the common, if you want to call it that, for output 0. And it can be DC or AC. This group has the same characteristics, totally isolated. And you can wire it up as AC or DC. This group is strictly DC, volts DC 2, output 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 six of them and it can only be dc dc3 is the common for output 8 dc4 is a common for output 9 and then dc5 outputs 10 11. now i say dc3 4 and 5 notice it says vac below those so you have three groups here isolated that can be dc or ac which gives you five groups dc0 and output 0 dc1 output 1 that's two groups if you want to call it group and then DC3 with output 8, 
DC 4 with output 9 and DC 5 with output 10, 11. All five of those can either be DC or AC, but not both. In other words, DC 0 could be an AC circuit and DC 1 be a DC circuit. DC 3 could be AC or DC and 4 and 5 and so forth. And then of course you have the analog output and again that common for the analog outs I connect up with all the other commons so I don't have any floating grounds. Okay I'm going to flip this around a little bit. You see here uh, this is the diagram out of the manual for the BXB and BXBA. This I've kind of flipped some of it around to make it easier to read to do my artwork and diagrams for actually connecting up this controller to your machine or process control or your learning station. So I'm going to start with the zero volts DC and the plus 24, 24 volts DC. Notice the black dashed line that goes to the zero volt DC side of your 24 volt DC power supply. And it comes in, lands on the neutral. It's not really neutral, it's common. It's zero volts DC. That minus or zero volts DC lands on the neutral and then jumpers over to common two, over to common analog on the output side and then goes over to common analog on the input side, jumpers to common 3, common 2, common 1, and common 0. And you don't have to do them in that order. You could come in anywhere on any one of those screw terminals and then jumper to all the rest. Now remember, I do it this way because I normally connect all of my commons together to eliminate certain noise characteristics. Now, the plus 24 dash line comes from the center terminal of your power adapter. I use nothing but 24 volt DC power adapters. That way there is no shock voltage uh, that the student is exposed to. It's plugged into the wall and a cable comes out of the power adapter and I use at least 2 amp capacity, 24 volts DC. And then the outside of that connector is 0 volts DC and the center is 24 volts DC. So now you see I've connected all the 24 volt DCs together. DC 0, DC 1, 3, 4, and 5. The reason I do that, even though I'm not going to use necessarily anything above output 5, which gives me 6 outputs wired up to 6 LEDs. Everything's all wired up in advance, so in the field, if I need to connect up something in a hurry, everything's already jumpered together. All I have to do is add additional I.O. wiring. Or, if I want to use a different voltage, I just remove the jumper and rewire it to the next point, leaving, let's say, DC4. I want output 9 at AC. Well, I just disconnect DC4 from the daisy chain between 3 and 5, and then I wire up my AC to DC4 and output 9 through the output device, the load. <clears throat> okay, here are the DC, basic DC inputs. Now, this is a wiring diagram. There's three of them. One of them is the actual, we'll call it the schematic, so to speak, that's connected up to input 0 through input 5. The other two are separate little illustrations for your benefit. These six inputs that I've got wired up here are meant to simulate digital field devices like photo eyes, proximity switches, um, limit switches, uh, interface signals from other devices, etc. Now what I've got here is enhanced four state input simulation in that each of these inputs with my toggle push button combo, I can simulate maintained on, maintained off, momentary on, and momentary off of much benefit when you are doing lab projects and want to not be in a position where you flipped on a toggle switch for a photo eye and then you went on and you forgot to flip it back off and then you don't understand why your code's not working and then you booger up your code because it's not working and then you realize you forgot to turn the photo eye off. So that's what you have here, four state inputs. Up in the corner we have a, an example of the back of the push button, the common normally open, normally closed, and how it's connected to the toggle switch. 
So you got plus coming in, it goes through one of those two contacts, goes into the toggle switch, and then to the actual input on the controller. And down in the lower left, we show the actual components of the toggle switch and the push button switch. In review, we have six inputs connected, input zero through five. And we have a electrical schematic showing toggle switches and push buttons. We also have in the upper right corner a diagram showing some kind of symbols for the back end of the momentary push button with the LED behind a lens and a toggle switch. And then down in the lower left we have that toggle switch and that push button shown again. And you notice that in both cases those three solder lugs are labeled common, normally open, normally closed. For the toggle switch itself, it's important for you to note that the baton or the toggle sticking out of the threaded barrel is pushed to the left, which means that the center connector, the solder lug on the, you know, sticking out the bottom of that toggle switch in the center which is what goes to the actual input 5 has to choose between the light purple and the dark purple. Well in the position shown it's connected to the dark purple. So always keep that in mind that whatever direction you flip the toggle it connects the center solder lug to the solder lug on the opposite side of the direction that you flip the toggle. Very important because when you mount your toggle switches into your box, typically you want uh, a specific selection in the up position and if you're using our box it's labeled normally open, normally closed. So on is up and off is down for the toggle switch. Outputs. Six LEDs and you can see on the back of that uh, momentary push button now we're showing that the zero volt DC goes to the terminal mark minus and the purple which is the actual output 4 goes to the plus side of the LED. It, this is really simple. Whereas on the input side we were sourcing plus 24 to the digital field device simulations, in other words the switches that then fed it to the input terminals and the electronics in the controller between N0 and common, the black wire, it syncs that signal. Here you're sourcing the electronics in the output side of the controller and it's being switched to the LEDs inside of those push buttons. And then each of the LEDs have a zero volt DC connection, mark minus, that goes back to the common side of the power supply. And then again you see that we have the red all jumpered even though we're not using output 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. They're already jumpered up just in case you want to use them. Analog. We're going to do a little analog but then I think I'm going to stop and start a new discussion so these don't go so long. And I will review some of this when we start the next one. But for right now, let's look at what we have. We have two analog inputs connected to a green and a gray wire. Input 0 and input 3. The green and gray wires go to toggle switches that select between 0 volts, 0 to 10 volts DC from a binding post, a red binding post, or in the up position to the wiper arms on potentiometers that are connected across the DC out of a bucking voltage converter that we have adjusted to 10.5 volts DC, roughly. We're powering this circuit with 24 volts DC. So we have two identical circuits, so to speak. One shows the symbols for toggle switch and potentiometer. The other shows the actual devices. This is to assist you in wiring up an analog field device simulator if you so choose to do so. So let's pause and start again in the next session.